In this video, we focus on learning unit two, learning outcome two, contrast the social model of understanding inclusive education from the medical deficit model. The topic of the video is unpacking the paradigm shift from the medical model of disability to the social model. The shift to inclusion and inclusive education is not separate to the shift in paradigms that occurred in the early 1970s and 80s. A paradigm is ultimately a way of thinking or a world view. So when we talk about a paradigm shift, we are referring to the change in a way of thinking. And in this case, it is the way of thinking about disability. The medical model of disability was popular from the early 1900s and ultimately was a model of medical diagnosis and treatment. When applying this model in the field of education, children with any type of difference or disability were singled out, a medical diagnosis was found and a label was given. The aim then being to find a way to fix the problem within the child, and most often in schooling, resulted in them being separated from the rest of their class and treated differently. Around the 1960s, a shift in this thinking became visible with the idea of normalization being introduced and ideas of mainstreaming and integration started to appear. While these terms don't equate to inclusion, they are aligned to a social model of thinking about disability and difference. A social model of disability was a whole new way of thinking. Let's take a look at each of these models of thinking in a little bit more detail. Medical deficit theories and the medical model of disability focuses on what is wrong with a person and identifying their sickness or disability. This condition, sickness, disability or difference is seen as being outside what is considered normal and therefore thought to be a social disadvantage. Medical deficit theories have had a major influence in the fields of psychology and special education. This has had a profound effect on the education of learners seen as having deficits, including those viewed as having disabilities or learning difficulties, which are often referred to as special educational needs. Within the medical deficit model, the view is that the person is the problem and that it is therefore the person who needs fixing to fit in with everyone else. The aim is therefore that the learner must be fixed to fit into the education system or essentially the classroom. This resulted in the exclusion of many learners from education and was the underlying theory for a separate special schooling system for those children who did not fit into the norm. In around the 1960s, a contrasting view of ability or disability and special education needs came about, the social model. This model was developed by people with disabilities and counteracts the, de the medical deficit model. The social model promotes the notion that while physical, sensory, intellectual or psychological variations may cause individual functional limitations or impairments, these do not have to lead to disability unless society fails to take account of and include people regardless of their individual differences. In an education setting, the social model asks us to shift our view away from the learner as being or having the problem. Instead, it proposes that society itself creates barriers around diversity. The issue is not the person, it is the world. Let's 
Let's contrast the key characteristics of the two models of thinking about disability. In the medical deficit model, where possible, a diagnosis is made. The learner is then categorized and labeled. Learners with diagnosed deficiencies are viewed as qualitatively different. For example, they have a different nature or standard to other learners. Often these learners are educated separately from their peers. Specialist support staff intervene to try to improve or even remove the deficiencies within the learner. They do this by using specific educational responses developed for this deficiency. Although in this video we're talking about the shift from the medical deficit model to a more inclusive social model, think about these characteristics of the medical deficit model and whether they still might exist in the way that some teachers teach or schools function in our, in our country today. Can we say that we have shifted completely away from this medical deficit model? Let's take a look at the key characteristics of the social model. According to the social model, the issue lies outside of the learner in an inaccessible world. So, for example, a learner in a wheelchair. The problem is not the physical um, impairment that the learner has if they can't get into, a, into their classroom, but rather the issue is the fact that there's no ramp or not a wide enough doorway for the learner to access the classroom. And this is the shift in thinking where we move away from seeing the child in the wheelchair as the problem and the physical impairment as the problem to seeing that the problem lies within the world, or in this case, the classroom, creating an inaccessibility for a learner. The social model does not deny challenges caused by diverse needs. So it's not denying, for example, that a learner with a physical disability in a wheelchair does not have or will not have challenges, but it doesn't view these challenges as a deficit. It argues that barriers should be removed in society and for the full inclusion of people with diverse needs in society, advocating for diverse children to be educated and participate fully in mainstream schools. Children with special education needs must have access to regular schools with inclusive orientation as the most effective means of combating discriminatory attitudes, creating welcoming communities, building an inclusive society and achieving for all. You might recognize this slide from the video on the pr underlying principles of inclusive education. This here is one of the key underlying principles of inclusive education and of the White Paper 6 in South Africa. And essentially, you can see how this aligns to a social model of thinking about disability. So in summary, let's ask ourselves a few questions. Do you think all teachers have left the medical model way of thinking behind? How has this impacted your own thinking around inclusive education? How can school communities shift their attitudes from a medical deficit model to a social model?